Hey guys, welcome to episode four of the Blue Mouse podcast. My name's Emily. I'm a full-time knitwear designer, so this is going to be a knitting podcast with a little bit of a focus on knitwear design as well. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, and if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. It's really nice to have you guys here. I am so excited about doing podcasts. It gets me really motivated to start knitting, and I just, I really enjoy this conversation with you guys. So grab your knitting, grab something good to drink, good to eat, whatever you want, and let's get started. So it is really, really hot in my room right now. There's no fans on, the AC doesn't really get to the second floor of my house, so I probably have to start taking breaks because I'm sure my face is going to turn bright red, especially with the studio lights on me. It's going to get really, really warm in here. I'm also very, very exhausted, so if I'm low energy, that is why. Just bear with me, this might be a little bit of a scattered episode. I kind of have show notes, but not really. I'll write them up properly after the episode so that you guys can have links to everything, but we're just gonna kinda take this one step at a time, I guess. It's gonna be a little bit of a more unstructured episode. So, let's see. I typically start out with a little bit of like catch up and then we get into the knitting. So as always, I have time codes in the description bar. If there's something that you want to skip over or skip to, go ahead and do that. I won't be offended. And if you have to watch part of it and pause and come back, that's totally okay too. I do that all the time with podcasts. However much time you have, that's great. I'm very, very happy to have you here for whatever amount of time you have. So... Uh, I'm um, trying to think what even happened in the past two weeks. So last week I did finish a shawl in like four days from like getting the idea to swatching to typing up and sending it out to testers in four days. That is I think the fastest pattern I've ever had. So I will be showing you that and I typically start out with FOs when we get to the knitting but I'm actually going to end with that because it is still downstairs drying and I want to make sure that has, you know, an extra 45 minutes to dry before I take it off the blocking mat. So you can skip to the end if you want, if that's all you're here for. But yeah, I am amazed at how fast that pattern worked up. It was a lot of fun. I really, really enjoyed it. I'm not much of a color knitter, but I tried to incorporate color in that design and it makes it go a lot faster. You know, changing colors and there's short rows and there's really simple lace which is just like a two stitch repeat so it's like you don't have to read charts or anything for that and then you get to the end and there's a little bit of more complicated lace but it's not hard so with all that going on it just seems to kind of fly off the needles my testers are already you know pretty far along so I'm, I'm really excited that design will be out it'll be out on the 8th of June which is next Friday can you believe that June is tomorrow I guess when you guys are watching this, it will be today, but I can't believe we're already at June. It went by so fast. Where is this year going? I I mean, I'm happy about it. There's, It's been a great year so far, but it's going by so, so fast. But I don't know. I'm really excited for you guys to see that design. I'll show it to you at the end here. And I used the Mano Cell Uruguay yarn which I will have a video up soon on that company because I, I think what they're doing is really cool so I made a video about it. I've meant to do the editing for that sooner than this podcast but it'll be out this week for sure. Let's see what else happened in the past week. Oh I shot a wedding on Sunday which was it was fun. I had a friend shoot it with me so it was nice to have someone there as well but it was hot. It was probably it had to have been in the 90s and the humidity was intense. I mean, we were downing bottles of water not as fast as we were sweating it off. It was so, so unbearably hot. And after that, I mean, weddings in general, shooting them is just exhausting. I typically need like four or five days to recover after shooting one because they're just so much work and it's just, I don't know how people do it full time. I honestly have no idea. But I think it's been even more exhausting because of how hot it was. 
and I was definitely dehydrated because we just didn't have that much water. We brought bottles, but then we drank them so quickly and then we ran out. So that's why I'm pretty low energy. I'm still feeling really, really exhausted from that day. That's pretty much all I've done in the past two weeks is just work. And I shot that wedding and I'm recovering from that and that's about it. So let's just get into the knitting, I guess. So grab yours if you have it handy and start working on it. Let's talk about it together and please join the conversation. I would love for you to comment and talk with me. And So I forgot to tell you where you guys can find me. Um, you can find me on Instagram as the blue mouse with an underscore at the end. I'm the blue mouse on Ravelry. And those are pretty much the two places that I'm most active. So YouTube, Instagram, and Ravelry are the best places to get in contact with me. Mainly Instagram, that's where I'm most active, but YouTube as well. So go ahead and join those communities if you're interested. I do have two Ravelry groups. I have one for this podcast, so if you ever have any questions that you want me to answer on the podcast, or you want to find show notes, or... And eventually it's where we're going to be having giveaways and knit alongs. So go ahead and join the podcast group um, to be, you know, in the know about things like that. And then I also have just a pattern group, which is just for my designs. So if you ever have any questions about designs or, you know, you just want to show your whips. I'm not very good at those groups, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I apologize if you joined expecting there to be a lot more chatter. I'm still trying to figure out how that all works. So that's my goal. That's, or that's one of my goals this summer is to try and figure that out. So just bear with me if you're a group member or if you want to join. I will be trying harder with that. So anyway, on to the knitting. I like to start out with yarn acquisitions and just kind of general acquisitions. So again, there are time codes if you're not interested in this or if you don't want to be tempted to buy yarn. I get it. You can go ahead and skip to the next section. But that being said, I have a lot of yarn to share, but I actually wanted to talk about this book. So, I'm actually in this book. So, it's the Our Maker Life Make Volume 2. So, it's got maker stories and just visual stories as well as patterns. And I have a pattern in here. So, some of you might already know about my Banff cardigan. This came out last September, I think it was. But this book has been in the works for a year. Actually, probably a little bit over a year. Because I remember getting an email about it probably last May. And trying to get my submission and everything ready before OML in Toronto last year. So I remember like frantically emailing it in a few days before that event. So this has been a long time coming. The Banff cardigan is actually my best-selling pattern and I had no idea that that was the case when I was working on it. I did not have a clue that it would do so well and that people would love it so much. So that's been really really amazing. So as well as having a pattern in here there's so many amazing maker stories. So of course we have Lindsay of Hello Stella. So, I mean, ugh, I love Lindsay's work. I actually have some more of her yarn to show you in a minute, but it's just really fun to read people's maker stories, and I haven't read them all. I've only read a couple, but that's one of my goals this week is to read more about them. So there are a bunch of incredible, incredible makers in here. I think Jewel of North Knits and Kelly of Knit Brooks did an absolute incredible job making that book. It's You can just tell how much work went into it, especially when you compare it to last year's. The improvement from last year's book is insane. I mean, last year's was like a magazine. It was pretty thin. And this year, it's like, it's a book. It's hefty. It's, it's filled with amazing, amazing content. So speaking of Lindsay at Hello Stella, 
I got the opportunity to try some of her new colorways and oh my gosh, they're to die for. I've never tried her single ply fingering yarn, so that's what I asked for this time because I wanted to try it. So this one is called Shell Cottage. It's 100% superwash merino and it's a single ply. It's 430 yards and 115 grams. Oh my gosh, just look at those colors. When she was posting about this in her stories, oh, I was losing it. I was like, come on, you can't be that good. You can't create that many amazing colorways. But she constantly amazes me with what she can create. Just pumping out that many amazing colorways is incredible. I, I'm not very good with color. So to see someone who is that good just leaves me in awe. I'm absolutely in awe of her color. So this is November Rain. So this is more of like a tonal purple. So this is the same. It's called her Lux Stella Base. So it's just a single ply superwash merino. So these are exactly the same, just different colors. Shell Cottage and November Rain. And ah, uh, I cannot wait to get started on these. I got these last week and I've been waiting to cake them up because I wanted to show them on the podcast because I mean as beautiful as a cake looks there's just something about it being skeined up do you know what I mean like it just it it just looks amazing I cannot wait to get started I'm gonna get started tomorrow swatching I'm not entirely sure the stitches I'm going to use but it's definitely gonna be a shawl so there may be a little bit of brioche, I haven't decided, but I think it's going to be pretty simple and then it's going to have some kind of edging or border that's more complicated. That's either going to be lace or brioche. I'm leaning more towards brioche, but I don't know, how does brioche look in single ply yarn? I imagine it would look great, but I've never tried it. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll be seeing all the behind the scenes in my stories and posts about it. All right, next one. Oh, I'm beyond excited about this. So Bethany of Woolberry Fiber Company reached out to me, oh, a couple weeks ago and asked if I wanted to try her yarn. And you guys, I was so starstruck. I love her podcast and I love her yarn. I've never tried it, but the colorways are just stunning. So it was on my list to try this summer and when she reached out to me, I, oh my gosh, I had the hardest time picking a yarn to try. I mean, she's got so many amazing colorways. I was just overwhelmed with all the options, but I'm really happy with my choice. So this is Redwood Forest by Woolberry Fiber Company and this is on her Simply Sock base so it is 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon comes with 438 yards per 100 gram skein so I mean just look at those those colors oh I I'm blown away by how beautiful it is and it's so, so soft for sock yarn. So, I mean, her yarn is incredible, but look at her logo as well. Is that not just the most stunning thing? I love it. It fits so well with her brand and, I don't know, just kind of who she seems to be through her podcast and through her Instagram. It just seems to fit her so well. So... I'm very, very happy with this. So this is another skein that I was waiting to cake up until after the podcast because, you know, you just, you get the full effect in the skein more so than you do in the cake. So I did a poll in my stories, I think yesterday, and I asked you guys if you would be interested in a shawl made from like one skein of 400 or so yards. I think it was like 300 and something to 50 said that you would be interested. So I decided I'm going to make two different shawl designs because 
you were split 50-50 on if you wanted it to be lace or you wanted it to be a more simple texture. So I'm going to do both. I'm going to make two simple shawls. Now I'm not sure which I'm going to do for this. So, I don't know, maybe tell me in the comments, do you think this would look better as lace or as a more simple knit and purl texture? So, let me know in the comments. I'm leaning more towards lace because of the gorgeous speckles. I just feel like speckles look amazing in lace. But, I don't know. Let me know what you think. I would love your opinion on that. So, I'm going to start swatching with that this week as well. And I'm so, so excited to try it. It's... It's lovely, Bethany. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to work with you. So, <laughs> we're not even nearly done. I'm sorry, I have so many yarn acquisitions. So I am working on a, a shawl design. So it's one of my whips. I showed it to you last time. I'm, I'm working with Storied Fiber Arts and I'm working with their Paris is always a good idea yarn, and that's their colorway, which I'll show you in whips. But I needed an extra skein, so I ordered an extra skein, and she threw in another one as well. So it didn't come with a label, but I looked it up, and I think it's Our Lady of Paris is the colorway. So this is it. It's got blues, purples, oranges, and cream. So, it's lovely. There was no label or anything, so I'm not entirely sure how many yards there are, but this is not the single ply. The other yarn I'm using from her is a single ply, but this one just looks like a standard sock yarn. But I'll find that out and I'll put it in the show notes. But the cool thing that I really, really like about her company is that she bases her yarn off of places she's been. So Paris is always a good idea. It's based off of Paris. And so she'll take a picture, I believe she takes a picture and then she turns it into a watercolor painting. And then she dyes up yarn based on that. So this is Our Lady of Paris, or what I think is Our Lady of Paris. So this is the watercolor. So you can kind of see you can definitely see how these work together because of the purple. The purple and the orange. You can really, really see that come through. So I think that's just such a great idea. I really, really like that. I mean, if you've been following me for a while, you'll know how obsessed I am with traveling. So anytime someone else kind of incorporates that into their business, I am all about it. So I'm excited. This might become a shawl. I don't know though, this is more of like a fall colorway so I might save this. Do you know what I mean? There are certain colorways that just seem to work better in the fall than in the summer. I mean I guess it doesn't really have to be specific, it's more your own personal taste, but the oranges and the purples just kind of give me more of a fall vibe. So, I don't know. We'll see, I might do a swatch maybe in a couple weeks and figure that out. But at the moment, I have too many whips to even worry about it, so <laughs> we're, we're not done. <laughs> I'm sorry. So I got these skeins, which are Malabrigo. This is their 100% baby merino wool, and these are 50 gram skeins, but they have 470 yards. Can you believe that? I mean, I've never worked with lace yarn, so maybe that's standard. But this thing is tiny for 470 yards. So, I'll take it, but okay. This is color 203, or Verdes. And, yeah, so these two are the same. And this is the same, but the colorway is number 63, or natural. So these, I did a, a bundle, kind of a bundle deal with people, with like a group of people a few weeks ago, and I won a giveaway because of it, and so they just gave me a gift card to this, um, to this like yarn shop website that I've never heard of, and 
The shop seems to me to be more like a a stash shop because the yarn is all like local yarn shop yarn. Like they had Malabrigo, Madeline Tosh, Mano Uruguay, and a bunch of other common LYS yarns. Less indie dyed and more, you know, commonplace yarns like this. So they had that, but then the pictures were very like they just look like stash pictures. You know what I mean? So they had a very random selection of things and I couldn't really find much that I really wanted so I just kind of settled for these because I had to use the gift card. So I don't know what I'll use these for. The natural I'll definitely use. I'm going to start collecting natural colored yarns because I find a lot of times that I will get a skein or two from someone I really like in a colorway that's really beautiful but I kind of want to pair it with something neutral. So I'm going to start you know, stashing neutral yarns. And these, they look different than they did online. They're more variegated than I looked online, so I don't know. I have no idea what I'm going to do with these. Um, they are a single ply, so a single ply lace. So Maybe I'll turn these into a shawl this fall. I don't know. For now, they're just going in my stash. So, those are those. And then, so you guys know that I'm working on this faded sweater. And I'm using Allie at Explore Knits and Fibers. So, she was previously Ford Explore Knits, as you can see on this label. But I think just yesterday she switched it to Explore Knits and Fibers because she was tired of all the confusion with having Ford in her name. So, yeah, I really like the switch. Her new logo is beautiful, Allie. You worked with a great creator on that. I think you were really smart to change your name and you picked a good time. It, it works. So, I'm very, very happy with these colors. Let me take the label off. So this is actually the same colorway that's at the top of this faded sweater. Now this batch looks a little bit different, which is totally typical with hand dyed yarn. So I think it's called um, Thistles on a Mountain Trail. We've just been calling it Mountain Thistles <laughs> to shorten it, but I, I love this color. So I asked her to dye me up a few extra ones, like a month and a half ago I think I asked her to, and these came in the mail like two weeks ago. And to be honest, I don't really know why I asked her to do it. I think in my head when I was starting the sweater, I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to run out of this yarn. I need more. Or maybe I was thinking I want to make an entire sweater out of this. I don't know what I was thinking, but I just went through with it because it's beautiful yarn. So. <laughs> To be honest, I don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but it's gorgeous, so it will definitely become something awesome. And I have three skeins total, so it could become a sweater or a giant shawl, which I'm a huge fan of. So yeah, we'll see. I'm in love with these though, Allie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, she just did like a Harry Potter collection. And I reached my yarn buying cap, but it was so, so tempting. Oh my gosh. Mm -mm. Like the Hedwig, the Pensive. And there was one other that I was just like... Mm. I was really, really, really hard not to buy them. I, I was struggling over here, like... Watching everyone else buy them and post about buying them. And her being like, there's only like two of this colorway left. It was difficult, but as you can tell by this little segment or this long segment of yarn acquisitions, I don't need any more yarn and I need to use up the yarn I have from her first. And then of course I will be buying up all of Allie's yarn because it's beautiful and I'm a bit obsessed. But we're on to the last yarn acquisition and then I have one more stitch marker acquisition. This is, let me look up how to pronounce it, Pichinku. 
So, am I holding that up correctly? So this is Pachinko. This is a wonderful, wonderful yarn. It like is a huge skein for what it is. Like it's really, really fluffy, I guess is the right term. So this is, it's a 100 gram skein, so it's 436 yards. And the colorway is called Tawa. It's like this beautiful, beautiful peach. So this is natural Peruvian yarn botanically dyed by women artisans in Cusco, Peru. So no chemicals, no nonsense, just beautiful yarn. It's stunning. I, I love this peachy color. So I think that this company started with like a, a Kickstarter or a GoFundMe. I think it was a Kickstarter. I think it was only like a year ago. I could be wrong. It could be two. But I think it was only like a year ago. And now their business just seems to be booming. I, I really like what they're doing, you know, supporting women in Cusco. And I've been following them on Instagram for a really long time and just finally decided to try it. So this is going to become a shawl. I will not have time to work on this probably until July because I'm all booked up. But this is, oh gosh, I forgot to even tell you what it is. It's 70% merino and 30% mulberry silk. And I've never worked with that kind of blend before. So it's, it's really cushy. Because it's only a 100 gram skein, but, but I don't know, it just seems... I guess that's not really a great comparison, but it just seems to be fluffier. These are both fingering weight skeins, but this one just seems to be a lot fluffier. So I'm excited. I think the drape on this will be unbelievable, and the silk just makes it lusciously soft. So I'm going to have to refrain from starting that early because <laughs> I don't have time, but I am excited about it. And then finally... Oh my gosh, I found these and I I couldn't resist. I've watched Pride and Prejudice, I think, four times in the past week. It's my favorite movie, it's my favorite book. So I love the 2005 Kira Knightley version. And I saw these stitch markers. And I just couldn't resist. And I'm trying to think of how I can even show these to you. <laughs> but they're little books. So there's Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility, and Emma. So, of course, Pride and Prejudice is my favorite, but they came in a set of three. Can you see that? Okay, so I just think they're adorable. I'm really excited to use them. And actually, because I've been so obsessed with that movie this week, I've had the idea to do a whole collection of patterns based around Jane Austen movies. So starting with Pride and Prejudice and then probably moving to like Emma and Sense and Sensibility and Mansfield Park maybe, but I don't know. So I'll probably be reaching out to Lindsay at Hello Stella to see if she wants to uh, collab on some colorways. Lindsay, I will be talking to you if you're watching this because we share a love for Pride and Prejudice so I feel like that's a good collab that needs to happen maybe later later on this year but yeah so I drew up some sketches of it while I was watching the movie this last time so I don't know it's uh it's gonna be cool I've got some great ideas for it but again I do not have time to be working on that right now <laughs> got too many other obligations to finish first. That leads me to whips. So yeah, let's just move on to that. All right, there's no real order to this. I'm just pulling from my box. So it's whatever's on top that gets first. So maybe I should use a sock blocker. I've never used a sock blocker before. I'm really worried about stretching these socks out. So I hope that this doesn't do that, because this is bigger than my foot. So, there we go. I have a hoe, or a half-finished object. 
So I have one sock done. And this is my Knit Crate yarn. So if you remember, I posted a video about it. I mean, I talked about it in my last podcast, and I did a video specifically on Knit Crate. The colorway is called Weekend. It was the May Sock Crate yarn. And it's this, like, beautiful blue with red specks. So this is how it knitted up. And I'm using the... Oh gosh, the Marley pattern by Cabin 4, I believe it is. And so it's just kind of this all-over ribbing. And then I did a Kitchener stitch for the first time. For the toe. The heel fits perfectly. It seriously was like it was made for my foot. So this is a heel flap and gusset, short row heel. Is that how, how it works? I don't really know. And then I did a, I don't know, is this a square toe? What is this called? Where you decrease, I'm thinking it's a square toe. But then you kind of get these, I don't know what you want to call them, ears. Does anybody have any tips on how to avoid that? Because I'm not crazy about how the toe is. I mean, the pattern's really well written, and it fits really well, but it just looks sloppy to me. Like, I don't know if you can tell that there's like a little piece here that sticks out, like part of a stitch on both sides that kind of sticks out. So, I don't know. I really like it. It's got cashmere in it, so it's like a really luxurious feel. And this is all that I have of my second one. So, not very far, and using my chain 20 stitch marker. So, that's all I have for that. Um, these are for myself, so there's no real rush. But I do really enjoy working on this pattern, because it's just... It's very mindless because there's just endless rows of ribbing, so it's like I don't even really have to think about it. I just keep going and going and going. It does get a little bit more tedious once you've turned the heel because then you only have ribbing on top of the foot and stocking it on the bottom, so you have to pay attention a little bit more. But it's not bad. And I'm loving, absolutely loving my chow goose. So these are their red lace ones, and the cable is just, it's incredible, it has no memory. It doesn't stick out in like an annoying way, it just kind of bends and folds as you need it to. So it's great. I am completely converted to using the magic loop method. I'm working on a cardigan pattern for Koigu, or in collaboration with Koigu. I'm using their KPM yarn which is this yarn right here, and I'm on to my second skein. And I'm about three quarters of the way done with the first sleeve. So I'm working this side to side, which is the construction I've never done before. So this is one of my own patterns that I'm writing. And so here's the beginning of a sleeve. It's got some ribbing down here at the bottom, and then it's just got kind of broken up garter ridges. And it is gonna sit like this so I'll seam it so I've got a little bit more to do but this is how much I have so far and I'm doing a slip stitch selvage edge to kind of make seaming at the end easier because I think mattress seaming slip stitches is a lot easier and a lot neater than doing a normal edge so hopefully for people who hate seaming, that will make it a little bit easier for you. So I'm working up the sleeve, and I'm going to cast on the front and cast on the back, and then work to here, and then bind off, but keep working a little bit more on the back, and then do the other side, and then do a three needle bind off up the back. So I've never done a three needle bind off, but I'm about to do it on another project, so hopefully I'll have it down by the time I get to that point in this project. I'm really enjoying this. I I love the simplicity of it. It's very simple. It's lots of easy stockinette mixed up with increased rows and 
garter ridges. So it's enjoyable. I'm really liking it. And the Koigu yarn, their KPM yarn, blooms so much after blocking. Like this is kind of all bumpy, but this swatch that I have, which I might have on hand, hold on. Okay, so here's the swatch. It lays really flat and it's got just wonderful, wonderful drape. So that is what this will look like once it's been blocked. At the moment it's really bumpy and the pearl ridges are very bumpy, but with blocking they really, really flatten out. I don't know if you can see that. It blooms with blocking. And that was kind of a newer concept for me. I'd heard people talk about that in podcasts, and I noticed it a little bit that some yarns got a little bit better with blocking, but this one just completely changes. The texture just become so much better after blocking so that was kind of a fun thing to have happen just to be able to notice that difference next is my summer top pattern I'm using that Cosette yarn from Knit One Crochet 2 it's kind of a mess at the moment oh that's the back this is the front so it will have a v-neck and then kind of a, a scoop in the back. So it looks really, I don't want to say ratty because it's not the yarn, it's the texture. The texture just looks kind of weird before blocking. It looks really like, you see how the bottom just really wants to kind of fold in, but it will look more like this. It will stretch out and it will look a lot better. So I'm working on the back right shoulder at the moment. And then I'm going to do a three needle bind off to these and then I'm doing short sleeves so they'll be short wide sleeves because I don't I don't really like tight sleeves on things so most of my designs you might notice have loose sleeves because that's that's my style so they're kind of going to be just really flowy nice sleeves yeah I'm very happy to have this project almost done with I feel like it's taken me forever and I don't know why, but when I sit down and dedicate time to it, it flies by. But when I like take a step back and look at it, I'm like, I feel like that's taken me forever. So I don't know what it is, but I'm really enjoying working with this yarn. I believe it's a cotton and silk and maybe a tiny bit of nylon mix. I'll be sure to put that in the show notes. The swatch looks so much better after blocking as well, like the drape just completely changes and the ribbing flattens out. So it looks really kind of bunched up at the moment because it hasn't been blocked. So next time it should be done. I'm gonna have it I'm gonna try and have it done tonight or tomorrow and off to the testers by Friday at the latest. It will definitely be done by the next podcast. And then this is my Paris is always a good idea yarn that I was telling you about earlier. It's by Storied Fiber Art, and this is the watercolor that came with it. So isn't that beautiful? So if I'm not mistaken, she takes a picture, and then she turns it into a watercolor, and then she takes that, and it's her inspiration for her yarn color. So this, and the yarn color. So you can really see how those two go together. So this thing is a mammoth. It is enormous, but it's getting easier and easier and faster because I'm decreasing. So this is an asymmetrical shawl. So I started at the large end and I'm decreasing on one side until a point. So I don't know how I'm going to properly show this to you. So here's the bottom of it. And then here we are now. So it's, it's enormous. So here's the texture currently. It's this like, I don't know, I want to call it like a smock stitch, but I know that's not what it is. It has a name and I forget what the name of it is. So essentially you slip every other stitch when you're working a wrong side row. So that you get floats on the right side. 
and that's what creates this kind of texture. It's hard to see in this light, but it's almost like a, I don't know, do you remember that book when you're a kid? It's a, it's like a rainbow fish with all the scales and now I don't remember anything else about the book. I just can picture it in my head reading it as a kid, but that's kind of what I get out of this. Maybe I'll look that book up and if it has a cool name that's what I'll name the shawl. Don't steal that from me. <laughs> but does anyone remember that that book? But that's what I get from this texture. It just kind of looks like fish scales. Like multicolored fish scales. And not in like a gross way but in kind of like a whimsical childhood kind of way. Does that make sense? I don't know. So it's got sections of really easy lace garter, stockinette, and this easy smock stitch, which I know that's not what it's called, but that's what I'm going to refer to it as. So this thing is huge. I'm on to my third skein of like 400 yard yarn. So I've used probably about 900 yards at the moment. And this will come in two sizes. It will come in the massive version that I'm making and a smaller version. I am a huge fan of like giant oversized knitwear, especially shawls and scarves. So that's what I like to design, but if I can, I like to incorporate a smaller size for people that prefer that. So these very neglected socks that I need to start working on. So <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm only like an inch further than I was last podcast. It's embarrassing. So these are the Wildflowers and Honeycomb socks by This Handmade Life and I'm using Hello Stella Rock Lobster and this is Madeline Tosh Twist Light in some color that I can't remember. But anyway, these are going to be a wedding gift for a friend of mine and she gets married a week from Saturday and I'm not done with the first sock. So. I gotta get a move on. My problem really is that I don't really like the 9 inch circulars anymore, but I feel like my gauge is going to be completely different if I switch to Magic Loop for the second one. So I feel like I just have to just plug on through and finish it. But they're not fun on circulars, on 9 inch circulars. And then this mess is. I knitted top that I'm working on in Lion Brand 24-7 cotton and someone schooled me in the pronunciation of the color. It's Ecru, not Ecru. Oh god, I hope I'm not switching that up. It's Ecru. I'll go back and check, but I, I made it this far. So I made it to the underarms where you split the top for the underarms and I realized that I made a mistake. And now I don't remember what the mistake was, but I think I needed to do one more row, either one more or one less row of stockinette in between the eyelets to make it even. So it's an uneven amount of rows. And I don't remember why it needed to be even, but for some reason it was like not going to work. So I found that out like a week ago and I haven't been able to bring myself to frog it. So I guess I'm going to be doing that on the weekend. And then finally, this is a selfish knitting project. So last week was probably one of my busiest work weeks. I worked all day, every day, from when I got up to when I went to bed. There were only, I think, two times that I like hung out with people and took a break. So for that entire week I worked just so much and by the time Friday rolled around I was like okay I'm kind of sick of having to like think so much and come up with my own designs you know. I want to work on something where I can just read what to do and follow it. I don't have to come up with what to do. So I chose a pattern and I've had this Hello Stella yarn in my stash since October 
So it's this wonderful custom green colorway, and it's her DK weight base. So it's 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, 4 ply, 246 yards per skein. So I love this color, and the original design I was going to make for this isn't going to work in DK. It has to be lighter weight. So I decided to go ahead and go stash busting and make a project out of that. So I chose, it's called Piper. It's by Libby Johnson, who has the Truly Myrtle podcast, and hers is one of my favorites. It's definitely top three. I cannot get enough of her podcast. If she put one out, like, twice a week, I would watch it. I mean, she's um, a New Zealander, so her accent's amazing, and she's just such a joyful person. I really, really enjoy watching her podcast. I just feel very inspired and... Just kind of joyful after watching her podcast because she's just such a wonderful person and it shows through who she is on her podcast. So I chose her Piper cardigan and I'm not very far. This is all I have but it's got cabling on it. So I don't know if you can see that. So this is all I have. <laughs> it's like the back of the neck or the back with shoulder shaping and everything and I have never done a seamless cardigan before so I'm very interested in learning this technique because I want to do a lot of them in the fall so I was like this kind of really just works out very well where I get to do some selfish knitting and enjoy one of Libby's patterns but also learn a new technique that I can use this fall so I'm excited I haven't obviously haven't gotten very much time to work on it. I was mainly swatching on Friday and then I worked a little bit on Saturday and Monday on it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying the pattern. It's I've learned a cable without using a cable needle, which maybe some of you are like, that's so easy, why are you so excited about that? But it was kind of a fun thing. I feel like I kind of leveled up as a knitter, you know? It's, I mean, I'm only doing a cable four, so you're only working with two stitches that you're not using a cable needle for, so it's not really very complicated. But it was a challenge to learn initially, so I feel I feel kind of, I'm proud of the fact that I've learned that. And this one I'll just briefly show you. I've made no progress. I'll just start out with that. This is my sweater. So I have a lot of collaborations going on right now. So that is what I've been working on, and any spare second that I get to do any kind of selfish knitting, I work on my socks for my friend, or the new cardigan pattern that I'm um, trying. So it just involves a lot of math. So any free time that I have, I'm like, I don't want to use that time doing math. So as soon as I get one or two more designs, probably two more designs from the collabs I'm doing, once those are done, then I will definitely start and finish that sweater because I love it and I want it to be out soon. And I definitely think that I want that to be a knit along project. So that is it for whips. I only have one FO, so I'm gonna go unpin it and get it for you and I hope that it's done drying. It's huge too, so why it's taken so long but I'll be right back and I'll show it to you okay so I haven't fully woven in my ends yet so excuse that but here's the shawl Can you see it kind of curls on the end which I love here's my shawl I'll show you some close-ups. So there's a little bit of striping and then there's some lace. And then my favorite part is the lace at the bottom. So you can see how it's kind of ripply and then you have that color B. You have that second color here that ripples as well. I love that. I really, really love that. So you've got some short rows as well. So it's 
It doesn't go with my outfit, so I apologize. But I'll put this on for a hot second, literally. Okay. So you could wear it. I don't know how you guys wear your shawls. This is a lot of times how I wear mine because I kind of like them to be wraps. I don't know, so you can get that kind of, you can get that lace there. Or, I really like it. I love this detail. I love that that ripples with it as well. Oh, you guys, I love this design. I am very proud of this design. So, I don't really know. How else do you guys wear your shawls? Do you wear them like this? Oh, can you tell I don't wear shawls very often because I can't seem to put this on right? There we go. So you can do that. Have some of that detailing. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take it off now because it's like 80 degrees in this room. But, yeah. What do you think? I really, really like it. I haven't decided fully on a name yet, so I'm not going to announce that until next week. You need 440 yards of both colors. So 880 yards total. And it's written for two colors. So there's striping and there's short rows. And the short rows won't, they won't make a difference. I mean, they shape it, but they won't, they won't show up unless you're using two colors. So you can use as many colors as you want, or you could just use two. I'm kind of, I'm a fan of the two color one. So yeah, the drape, oh my gosh. I haven't seen it like this yet, so it looked a lot different before it was blocked. It was more bunched up, and now it's like fully... I mean, just look at that drape. Do you see how that ripples? I love it. I am so excited about this. Shawls are definitely my new favorite thing to make. So definitely be on the lookout for those, because I'm going to be making like a ton of them this summer. All right, so yeah that's all I have for you today I'm in awe I have not seen this off the blocking mats yet this is my first impressions on it I love it okay so yeah that's it that is all I have for you guys today um let's see New podcast in two weeks. It will probably be out on a Tuesday instead of a Thursday. This was just kind of a weird week where I was really tired. So that's why it's out a little bit late. Um, this weekend there's kind of like a fiber fair in Worthington, Ohio. If you know where that is. It's about five minutes from my house. So I think I'll be checking that out on Saturday or Sunday. I'm not sure yet. But it's like kind of like a fiber festival and there's all these companies I've never heard of and I've just never really been a part of the Columbus or even just the Ohio kind of you know, fiber community, I guess. I don't know anything about these companies. I looked up the vendor list and I, I really only know two by name. I don't know them because I've been to their shop or anything. I just recognize the name. So it should be fun. I'm looking forward to just kind of checking it out. I am probably, hopefully, not going to buy more than one skein because that's my limit, as you can tell by all the yarn I have down here. I don't need any more. I really don't need any more. Yeah, anyway. So, that shawl pattern will be out on June 8th, which is next Friday, which ugh, I'm really, really excited about it. I love it. I love the way it turned out. It's just gotten me very, very excited for more designs. So yeah, I look forward to chatting with you guys in two weeks. 
Have a great rest of your week and a great weekend. Please, please join in the comments, join in the community, say hi to me here, say hi to me on Instagram, just say hi. I would love to meet you, I would love to know that you're watching, I would love to know what you're working on. It could be anything. Just come say hi, I would love to chat with you. So I'll see you guys in two weeks. Have a great day. Bye.